everyone, my name is Chantel and welcome to another Active HDL video. I'm going to be going over simulation and debugging through Intel Cordis Prime Pro. And while ModelSim is Intel's very own simulator, Active HDL's verbose and fast performing simulator and debugger environment offers lots of simulation and debugging tools, as well as reduced simulation time. Active HDL's simulation engine can cut down simulation time to at least half of how long other simulators would take. So, for this video, I'll be using Cordis Prime Pro 22.4 and Active HDL 13.1. Unlike the standard edition, Pro does not have native link simulation support, so we won't need to worry about setting Active HDL as a default simulator. And we won't even need to compile the necessary simulation libraries, as we will see later. For this demonstration, I will be using an example design taken from the IP catalog. To generate the design, first, open up a new project by using the new project wizard. And once the wizard appears, hit next and you're going to specify your working directory. The name of your project. and the device of choice. Under devices, I'll be selecting the Cyclone 10 GX family, and I'll be selecting this model of Cyclone 10 listed as the 35th device. After that, just click on finish, as we won't need to add files or specify anything else at this point. With the project now open, and once the IP catalog is updated, underneath the IP library, click on interface protocols and expand the menu. Then click on audio video and then SDI2 Intel FPGA IP. This will open up the IP parameter editor and this is where we're going to generate the example design. Before we can edit the IP, name the IP variant and specify where you'll be saving it. Saving the IP is optional since we're using this window just to generate the example design. Now in the IP settings tab, you'll want to set the direction to transmitter. In the design example tab, select serial loopback in the select design option. In the design example files, you'll just want to leave simulation checked since we won't be synthesizing this design in Cordis. Now click on generate example design. It will ask for the directory for the example design Click OK, and from here, Cordis will go through the process of generating the design. At the end of it, the window should say that the design was successfully saved in the directory specified. With the design generated, we can now exit the IP parameter editor. After this point, we'll be using the designs generated tickle script and do macro to perform simulation and debugging in Active HDL, but if you already have an existing Cordis project with a test bench, what you're going to do is that you're going to go to settings underneath assignments and go to board and IP settings. Here you could choose your preferred HDL for IP generation. And here under IP simulation, you'll want to check generate IP simulation model when generating IP and select Riviera Pro. While this does say Riviera Pro, the simulation script generated will also work for Active HDL. Then click on Apply and then OK. Next, you're going to go to Tools and then click on Generate Simulator Setup Script for IP. Choose the output directory and then click OK. This will generate the necessary tickle script for your project containing any Cordis Intel IP models and it will be sourced inside of the do macro. The generator creates only the tickle script, but the tickle script does come with a section that specifies how to create the necessary do macro with the generated tickle file. I've now moved over to Active HDL, but before I begin simulating, I'm opening up the tickle and do files to show key areas that you can modify to do things with your simulation, such as setting breakpoints and collecting code coverages. So this is the simulation script Cordis auto generator for Active HDL and Riviera Pro. As you can see, this script comes with a text box describing how to format your top level script, 
which would be the .do macro. If you generated a simulation script from Cordis using your own design, use this step-by-step -step guide to create the top-level script. You can also see this tickle script sets the compilation libraries, and it also compiles them, which is why we didn't have to worry about using the simulation library compiler inside of Cordis. And we now have our do macro. I'll be editing some parts of this file for more debugging and simulation options. The first thing I'm editing is the set user defined Verilog compile options. Right now it only has define plus SDI sim, but I'm going to add arguments for enabling debug and code coverage for just statements and branches. With multiple arguments, you'll need quotation marks around them. Also note that turning on the debug switch does slow simulation time down, so if you're running regressions on your design, it's best to omit the debug switch. The second edit is after the set command line, and I'm going to add a line to change the directory to where the dot do and tickle scripts are. This is because the sourcing causes the working directory to change, which would lead to a compiler error if not changed back. Now also notice how all the additional files that are being compiled use the user defined Verilog compile options variable. This makes it easy to pass these arguments to all those files rather than manually typing it out for each line. Towards the bottom, after setting the top level file, I'm going to edit the elab debug line to include the arguments for code coverage. If we go back to the tickle script and locate elab debug, the script already passes the simulation argument with debug enabled. And lastly, I'm going to be adding the commands to generate a waveform with all the signals from tbtop. Now with the do macro edited, we can run the simulation. In Active HDL's console window, first change your directory to where the do macro and tickle script are located, and then type do dash tickle aldic dot do. Hit enter, and the compilation and simulation process of the Cordis example design will run. I typed tickle in this case because the file was generated with Riviera Pro in mind, which is read in tickle configuration. Once that process has finished, we can see for this particular example design that the transmit test was successful. And we now have a full waveform view of all the test bench signals and their values during the run. So here inside the waveform viewer window, you can do things like sorting your signals in various ways, like by signal type. And you can group your signals by creating a named row and moving those signals under the named row. And you can also select your signals and create a virtual group for them. In the waveform viewer window, you can also use the comment mode to add comments to different parts of the simulation run. This window also has measurement mode, where you can place measurements across one signal or even across two signals. And during your simulation, you can track different types of events across a signal, like tracing whenever there's an event occurrence, whenever there's a rising and falling edge, and more.
And these are just some of the many tools you can utilize with your rape form results. And thanks to debug being enabled, you can reset the simulation if you want. And then you can use the run buttons to run for a certain amount of time. Or you can use the stepping functions to step through the code. You can use the structure browser to view the different source files the design contains. And you can even set breakpoints inside those source files. The breakpoints can then be used to run through the code to see what the simulation results are when the simulation reaches that breakpoint. There's also other different debugging windows like the watch window. You can use this window to monitor other signals outside of the test bench. Just click and drag the signals you want to watch and continue to run through your simulation to view the changes. The design can now also access ActiveHDL's advanced data flow, which can be used to view the design connectivity while the simulation is running. Just highlight the source item and then click Add to Advanced Data Flow, and it will automatically generate a visual diagram. You can expand this diagram, and you can click on signals to highlight how they are connected. And by clicking View Trace, you can see more details on the different processes, instances, and signals within the area you click on. And finally, with our simulation data, we can now generate the code coverage report. Head over to Simulation, ACDB Coverage, Generate Report. I'm going to leave just Statement and Branch coverage checked, and I'll click on Generate. The console then shows that the report was generated, and we can now open the code coverage report. Here we have the overall page that summarizes the percentage of coverage for statements and branches. For example, the percentage of statements covered isn't 100%, which means that this test bench didn't cover all the statements. Expanding the design, you could click on each individual source to see its individual coverage report. And below the design section, you can click on a process and see the statements that were not executed in simulation, which are indicated in red. In the code section, you can also see how many times each statement was executed under the hits column. And there you have it. We were able to simulate and debug a Quartus project through ActiveHDL and use many of the tools ActiveHDL provides to gather lots of information on the design just from simulation. Even without native link simulation support, you could still use ActiveHDL's simulator to make simulation and debugging of Quartus projects faster and more comprehensive. Thank you all for watching, and happy simulating!